let's discuss the manometer. So you're asking, why do you have the two ports? From one port, we're reading pressure in the duct. The pressure in the duct has more pressure than in the room, right? This system's in the room. We have a fan mechanically pressurizing with air the plenum. It has pressure, right? But what do we measure that pressure against? How do we set the bar and say, well, what is that pressure? We need to reference it to something, right? And that's where the second port comes into play. This port doesn't have a hose. This port is saying, here's the pressure here. So what's the pressure in, what's the, pressure in the duct in reference to the room. Does that make sense? So what if you had a horizontal out of, uh, attic application? Would you have to run a hose to the indoor room or no? You're in the attic and the attic's vented, right? Mm -hmm. Normally, I would Hopefully. say this application. So a vented attic, you're, you're, you're basically dealing with outside pressure at that point. So you don't have any pressures and you're referencing that pressure. I'm not sure if you would come into a situation where you have enough pressure in the room that would be so drastic where it would cause an, an inches of water column and balance on that input. But you can use this gauge for room pressurizations if you wanted to. So here's a nice application with this tool. Let's, let's just for a second step away from the digital truth flow and you buy the kit that comes with the DG8. And let's say you got a house that's got a massive master bedroom. Right, huge two exterior walls, vented attic, a lot of heat coming in from the attic. Let's say the insulation in the see old house, it's R20, right? And it's not placed well, right? And you got two walls and they're full of heat, a lot of glass. And they also got that massive bathroom, right? Congrats. And there's a huge, you know, huge garden tub, four by four window, massive eight inch drop in the bathroom or something, right? What I'm getting at is, let's say there's 800 CFMs going in that master bedroom and bathroom combined. But all that air has to get back to the return, right? We've got to cycle the air. But let's say there's only one 36 inch door right there and it's got a one inch cut. That problem? It's a problem, right? My house, my spare. There's nothing in it, but um, I knocked out a 20 by 40 return in my kitchen and stuff. But it has so much pressure in that room that if you walk by it, like you can hear the whistling from underneath the door. Right. Of the, like literally, it's the best thing in the world to lay so in the hallway. So let me ask you this. Are we there. starving that air conditioner for air when we do that? Are we starving it? No. Maybe, right? We don't know because we don't know if we're pulling air from outside in at that point. No, I felt right? filled. <laughs> <laughs> let's take a, this is kind of getting a little deep, but let's say that room's heavily pressurized and the air's not coming back into the main room. That air conditioner is going to get its air or the fan motor is not going to move any air, one of the two. Because it, it was a load bearing wall, it was an addition. It used to be a garage, now it's a room. Uh, I did not seal the attic, so it is right, so the attic. This is getting pretty deep in the building science, but are we forcing potentially infiltration into the house yes, at that point? Absolutely. Right? We are. Yeah. Because what did we do? We've killed the conditioned air that we blew into the room that's going to heat up and come back for recircula recirculation. And now, that are we? do we have the chance of pushing that pressurized room air outside? No. Yes, because I have single pane windows. There's leakage to a certain degree in every room, right? So if we're pressurizing this room and it's heavily pressurized, do we run a risk of putting our conditioned air outside of that room? Yeah. Dude, my yeah. house would be perfect for you guys to do a demonstration <laughs> on because that's full of work. It's a mess. Next oh, week. it's bad. Next week. And no insulation too, by the way. So <laughs> zero. So <laughs> what I'm getting at is we can check room pressure from that room with the door shut in reference to the room we're standing in. Let's say I'm standing in the main room that has a return. And I want to know if that room's pressurized, because let's say they're saying it's hot in this room at night. Okay, well, a, a nice little quick test that takes two seconds, throw a tube under the door, shut the door, and if the Pascals, like you can switch this to Pascals, if the Pascals are saying 22, that's a heavily pressurized room, right? 
and that's a problem. That is a problem that Air's should- coming in, but it's not going out. Yeah. Air's going in, so you're it ain't coming out. We're starving the return, or we're bringing air in I from outside it. into the return, because yeah. we're forcing infiltration. So you would put the positive tube mm, in the room, and then leave that one to work. Right, right. The think, room. Of, think of, and this, I think by explaining this, it also helps you understand what we're doing with the pressure on the system, right? Yeah. If that room's got more pressure than this room, well then, what's the pressure in that room in reference to the room I'm standing in? This would work well in commercial applications too, I would assume, as far as like restaurants, maybe, uh, what do they call them? Mes uh, not messages. What do they call the front of stores at that certain store recently? Vestibules? Vestibules, you know, where you walk into a store and uh, you, because in commercial applications, especially, uh, and residents, but, Positive pressure, negative pressure, that's a big thing, yes. especially with makeup air. Absolutely. You you know, in my previous life, I did a lot of uh, grocery store air conditioning work. I wasn't on the refrigeration side. And when you have those grocery stores and they have those massive kitchen hoods, yeah. right, and they're sucking out a lot of air, and the there's 80% 80, 80 makeup, but let's say they don't even have a dedicated outdoor air system and the building's negative. Well, this manometer will tell you yeah, what a tube, and, and outside, in reference to inside, is this building negative? And if it is, potentially you're going down the road of offering a dedicated outdoor air system. Makeup air unit condition. Right. Ooh. Same principle applies, right? Um, so it'd be, it would be nice to start like really studying up on Pascal's. Like it's a term that I feel like has not been addressed enough in the industry, but it's a very valuable measurement. For years, I didn't know what Pascal's were, right? <laughs> you know, I'm not gonna say I knew it five years ago. It, it hadn't it's been so- a much smaller measurement of pressure right. than like you would with- It's a powerful tool that I think we're just now in a large scale starting to uncover that we can use this for diagnostics, right? Like microns, microfarads? Just like it. That's the really nice part about the manometer that's going with the kit, right? You know, because your, your typical field manometer is not going to read in Pascal's. So you're not going to be able to do that kind of stuff. Like, you're not going to drop name brands, but you can't go into Pascal measurements with typical $100, $150 manometers. Yeah. We want to focus on this one. So oh, let me just explain what they are. This is looking at the airflow and the static pressures to get as much all information in as we can, all, all in one. Here is if you just wanted to do it even quicker and only look at the flow, but not the pressures. And then this is actually, if you're an energy rater and you need to do the system airflow for uh, ResNet 310 points, it's not you guys. Or in this one, if you're just measuring pressure. Just to look at the gauges and stuff. Yeah, so like if you, say, if you, if you measure, for example, pressure in a bedroom, yeah. And you just want to save that. That's what that's okay. for. So you can yeah. tell exact room. You can go to each room and just use this yep. one and check. Yeah, so this, this is a bedroom one, bedroom two, bedroom three, and just save those as a just a pressure measurement. So hit the top one there. So this is, a, like we, is it's it a, a furnace, furnace or an air handler? Yep, gas furnace. Yep. And then we're going to do side return. Yep. Yeah, so we got 270. You have uh, 112, I think is the number. Uh, this is a three ton. So what this is telling you is basically when you set up the system, you want to make sure it's in the highest cooling speed. You want to make sure there's nothing that's bypassing the filter. So if you had like a fresh air intake, a fresh air intake or a bypass filter where somebody's like doing HEPA as a bypass, you want to shut all that off. So all the airflow is going through the main filter. So that's just your setup screen. You can skip that after. So now we're going to start measuring pressures. We got the manometer here. Uh, static pressure tip is on it. You just look at the photo and you put it where it says so it's measuring a pressure that's what you see here mm -hmm. and you can go ahead and hit take a measurement I wouldn't need two and put one like on the testo one yep. I have to put both of mine in yep but now on this one I can just put one in save the measurement in. yep and go to the next and move yep. on and then it's gonna calculate the drop so now where you want to put it on the blower I don't know exactly Okay. How I would put it yeah, there. So I, I actually let you mistake make a mistake on purpose here. This oh, that's my that, filter. That's supposed to be upstream of the filter, but in this case, there's no ductwork upstream of the filter. Mm -hmm. So go back and change it to a filter grill. Go back one more. Change that to a filter grill. Okay. Now hit next. Okay. So now. Now there's it'll only be one measurement. Yeah. It's a very unique uh, application right here. Yeah. 
it's a filter grill disguised as a filter slot. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So now it's telling you to put it between the furnace and the evaporator coil so that we've drilled a hole over on that side. Oh, uh, no, uh, this one here. So between oh, okay. the furnace and the, you need to look at the diagram there. Are you pointing it down into the flow? Downwards. There we go. So you just hit take a measurement. You got all three measurements. Mm -hmm. You can either hit continue, or if you feel like you made a mistake on one of those, you could just tap on it and repeat. And retake it. Yep. Or if you realize it's a two stage and you're running it, in not yep. in full <laughs> blow, <laughs> yep, or right. it's in dehumidification. Exactly, yep. And so then you just hit continue. continue. Yep. So now you're actually gonna take the filter out and put the true flow in. And that would be that. Yep, actually oh, it says leave that there. You want, that needs to stay there. There, I'll hold the door for you, that'll be easier. Oh, you got a magazine for Yeah, cool. it's a game changer. Yeah. So is there a certain way this has to go? Or does it say on it? Or I'm does not going to tell matter? you. Oh, air in. Wow. I was looking for an arrow. Yeah, we have to put the arrow on the side. That's the problem. Okay, so that, I mean, as long as it's kind of set up so that there, air's not going to get past it. Yeah. Then you get, you'll get Pushing a good measurement. all the way up. Yep. So when you take this measurement, it stays at the top, going yeah. through everything? Yeah, we'll explain that later, but it actually needs to take this measurement with the filter, and then it needs to take it again with a true flow in. Okay, so you put that in, yep, take yep. measurement. Oh, it says it there. I like how you have pictures and, like, step-by-steps, but I like the pictures best. Yeah. <laughs> that, okay. <laughs> those are the books you like. Hey, yeah. those are my best books. Comic books, man, right? Okay, continue. so hit continue. So then just give it a name. This is just how you want to save the file. So there's what we got. Take a look there. So our total external static is pretty good. Yeah. Airflow is right on the border between being okay and being low. too low. Mm -hmm. Okay, now look at down here. If you look at these three, that's going to give you some clues about what's causing the flow to be so low. Which is our mainly our return duct. Yeah. Is our big problem. Yep. But what do you notice about this return duct? I mean, it's uh, a... <laughs> So it's do you short. Think, do you, do you, <laughs> it's in, in air conditioning. In this case, do you think it's the 20 feet of flex that's only 10 inch, or do you think it's the filter? You know, at this point, um, I would ask why he has this system in this warehouse yeah. with another working system over there. Yeah, right. I will right. be that guy. Yeah. So in this case, we can probably assume it's not the flex duct. No, it would be a filter. It's the filter. Yeah. Right. So what we can do here, uh, we made this handy dandy thing that we can uh, take, take the filter out and measure it with this instead um, and see how it changes things. And now we get super fancy here. Have you put it in backwards yet? Uh, when I saw them when they yeah. did it over yeah. there, yeah. It's nice to have this access, otherwise it'd be a little... <laughs> yeah, it's a little trickier in a real filter slot where you, <laughs> you can't grab the side of it. Yeah, well, you'd also shut the unit off. Oh, no, no, you wouldn't shut it off, actually. Well, the instructions say to shut it off, but... In between. We know that people might not always do that yeah, if they're trying to keep it in high stage cooling. How durable are these things, like if I drop it? Cause... It's very durable. Okay, because I'm kind of clumsy. We'll leave that in, right? Huh? The instructions say oh. leave that in. Oh, leave this one in? Oh, yep. okay. I didn't follow the directions. It does say to turn it off. I like how it has the step-by-step kind of, you don't want to look at my phone. Oh, yeah. oh look, I put it in backwards. <laughs> See what happens? It was fun. We were both watching you do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I watched when they put it in backwards. I did. <laughs> you know. 737. All right. Everybody complains that they can't find the button. It's just because they're not on Team Android. Ah, <laughs> Jessica's yeah. not having that problem. So in the, the Apple version, the continue button you just hit, it's just tiny blue text. Oh. So now what do we have and, and why? So we've got, that's good. That's First good. of all. It's the plenum that's. Yeah, you so pegged that. the needle <laughs> on the supply plenum pressure. 
So my airflow is too low because it's just kind of hanging out right there. Yeah. Okay, and that's why that's on the red, it's on the edge of the red. Okay. And your total external static is too so then high. Click on the details and that'll tell you what we think is going on. Undersized duct or blockage, which is very accurate. Yeah, you, you hit oh, the that's details. Just that's the what that is. Yeah. I was looking, so I, anyway I like that because I, you know, that's like on the, the measure quick app and I use that yeah. so much. That is nice. I like that. And have you uh, created a report before? So click on the, the yellow one there. You can actually take a photo of the um, so camera. Just, so that's going to, oh. yeah, hit, yeah. And it automatically saves them. Yep. So now hit create report and then scroll down there. You'll see your, and it's still putting them on there, but there's your photos. It doesn't pinch to zoom. You got to hit the plus button. But I like how it really breaks it down. And when you're talking to yeah. the homeowner, it's black. And, they like black and white. Mm -hmm. So that's very helpful. Yeah. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.